I was uh, replicating last week's week of preparation carried over into this week with the, the different circumstances just coming off the two games. In terms of like our schedule or your intent? The week. Yeah, I thought it was the same, you know, in, in full transparency, as I said, you know, I thought it was the same for Indiana too. You know, I thought that was a great week. So I think a lot of things that we're learning about is just, you know, getting into the game, managing the situations, um, managing, you know, success and adversity and, and handling those. Um, we're very, we've been very good at handling adversity after games and coming back and rebounding. Uh, I think the guys, the older guys have told me from, since the day I got here, hey, we're, we're built for that. It's about handling it within the game. So I thought we did a better job of that last week. We'll have to do it again this week. You expect to have Tommy Hill available on Saturday? Um, um, not sure. <laughs> you know, he's practiced a little, a little bit. You know, he didn't practice Tuesday. He practiced a little bit Wednesday, but uh, um, I'm not sure. But that secondary, you know, they they forced an interception in every game but one this year. I mean, just what do you like about the way that they've been able to force those turnovers? Yeah. Um, well, we're beat up. You know, I mean, that's you know, we had we don't have Malcolm, uh, we don't have Tommy. Uh, you know, potentially Tommy. Malcolm's doing his best to get back, but I don't think that he will. So. Um, we'll be counting on some other guys um, as well, but uh, you know they're, they're, they're competitive. Um, you know, part of that is we have we have a great rush. You know, so that helps. I think it's all everything on defense is interrelated. Now we're seeing an offense this week, uh, led by Coach Bienemy, that's that's truly a West Coast rhythm offense. I mean, the ball's out. Quarterback hits his third step. The ball's out. One hitch. The ball's out. You know, they're they're not built to turn the ball over. Um, they do an excellent job of getting it out of their hands, but I think our guys are, you know, they're, they're focused. They, you know, they we play a lot of coverages. They they study a lot and prepare, and um, hopefully whoever's out there will play to a good standard. What is Hart Sox injury? He hurt his hamstring in the, I think on the whatever that first drive of the third quarter, fourth quarter in the last game. So Jeremiah went in and played the most of the you know the rest of that after he was down. If both those guys are out, Hill and Hart Sox, you expect Charles to start? Yeah, we're, we're, we're playing on Jeremiah to start. Jeremiah, just in terms of what his skill set is and how he's able to help. Yeah, is Jeremiah, Jeremiah is a it? tremendous athlete. He's he's had to play in some serious situations. You know, he has the benefit of you know going against you know two of the two of the best wideouts in the league last week, and so he you know, he should be very confident. You know, he goes against uh, those guys and comes out and you know does a good job. So um, you know, he's probably not many guys as fast as him. You know, um, just like any young player. Um, Building their confidence, you know, building, building, you know, it's a lot, old, it's a lot different when you're older and you've played a lot and you, you know, you've had good days and bad days and you know you can do it. Um, when you have a bad moment, like a, if Ty Robinson has a bad play or Giff has a bad play, they just they think it's just a bad play. When you're young, if you have a bad play, you think it's condemning of your ability, but it's not. You know, Jeremiah is going to be an excellent player, and um, uh, this was this will be quite a challenge. And um, you know, he's practiced well this week; he'll be ready. Uh, follow up this week sounds like I think Sat said he maybe put on a show in the wind on Tuesday. Yeah, well, I mean, just uh, you know, he's the ultimate example of to, we've been able to use for the players of just trusting the process. You know, um, a lot of times all of us we forget about the concept of development. You know, coaches we forget about it. You know, parent as parents we forget about it. You know, um, players sometimes forget about it. John's proven that. Like if you just show up every day. No one can give you confidence. You know, you have to you have to develop. You have to work your technique over and over and over again. You have to suffer some hard moments. And then um, you know, when the time comes and you're ready, hopefully you've developed enough that you can make the plays. And so um, he he had a great week this week. You know what? He might go out and he might make one. He might miss one. But he's he, we know he, what he can do. And so full trust on our end, um, you know, moving forward. Is there anything that UCLA does specifically that's kind of allowed them to have success stopping the run and the, the way that they have? This yeah, year? they. Um, well, first of all, they have excellent, excellent, excellent defensive linemen. I mean, they're two inside guys. You know, there's a whole there's a whole group of people that play. You know, like Kentucky's doing it. Oregon does it. Some they're doing. You know, play this. You know, quarters teams that get two huge athletic big men inside and they kind of two gap and let you play coverage. Um, and that's what they are. I mean, they they um, are they're rugged, they're aggressive, they're physical. The linebackers do a great job running through gaps. Um, they're elusive. They're they attack. Um, two is is as good a pass rusher as we'll see. So they they just have really good players up front, 
and uh, and then they'll they'll play man and bring pressure. So they're 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 able to sit there and play too high and stop the run, and then they'll also when they need to. They'll, they'll, they'll bring different pressures. But I just think they have excellent players. You know, well coached. They have excellent players. And uh, they've, um, you know, the, the most yards they've given up rushing is 150 some to, uh, to LSU. I mean, no, no one's really run the ball on them at a high, high level. You know, we've, we've given up 200 some to Indiana, but yet they haven't. So. The Big 12 was taking back a bunch of the in helmet communication. Have you had any issues at all from. No, that's every, it's every conference, yeah. yeah. We had to send ours back. Oh, really? We had to have ours upgraded last night. Yeah, I think ours are done. Yeah, we are, yeah, yeah. It's the first I heard of it yesterday. I got a call from a, from a coach saying, "Hey, there's a, there's a, you know there's some sort of issue," and I wasn't involved in it. Susan and Susan and those guys were involved in Jay getting it getting it upgraded. So um, hopefully everything's secure. Never had any issues or seen anything that you noticed from that. Well, I mean, I would think if someone was listening to what we were saying, they probably wouldn't tell us. <laughs> so uh, it's the first I heard of it yesterday. I know, I know, some, I know, I know. Teams have known about it. You know, some some teams have known about it. We didn't. So, um, I I don't I don't really know much more than that. But um, hopefully, hopefully, nothing happened. Uh, you know, um, non-integrous. Coach, uh, three uh, true freshman DBs: Caleb Bennett, Braylon Crude, and Dominic Jones. Can you just talk about their development? What you've seen from them lately? Yeah, we took them on the trip. You know, the hope was, I think Donovan played early one game. You know, um, they've been doing a really good job. Um, practicing first on the scout team, and then and then moving over, and, and you know, and we've used some like you know Larry Tarver, Amari Sanders. They use some of their games early, you know. Um, uh, but uh, you know, I think we have a group of group of guys over there that will come out of this year with a bonus year, and um, uh, but they can help us down the stretch. So I think uh, you know, I'm not saying you will, but you could see some of those guys you know play on special teams. I think you probably will see Donovan a little bit this week. You know, with you know, it's a long season. Um, you know, we're coming down the stretch here with four games left, and we have some guys who can help us with depth and also with you know special teams. So, but I'm really happy with with that group. You know, I think um, I think they've worked really hard, practiced really hard. They have a good veteran group ahead of them to learn from. Um, you know, guys like Mario Buford have been have kind of been playing all year, but those other guys they'll um, they'll help us hopefully. There's still guys that could go either way in terms of their red shirts. Point. No, I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't burn anyone's redshirt at this point. Is a guy like Corcoran, somebody who could potentially that's a, that's probably a different situation. That's more of a personal decision on his end. You know, if he's not back yet, if he gets back and uh, could play, um, we'd have him ready to play. And if he wants to, you know, redshirt and come back, the ne- you know, next year, then you know, we would we would do that for him. Um, but that's really, you know, a personal decision for him, and I wouldn't ask him to even think about that until he's actually healthy. You know, he hasn't even he hasn't taken a rep in a practice yet, so I think he's still, you know, still a ways away. And you know, the unique thing now is if you do redshirt, you can play in the postseason. So you know, get, getting to the postseason is big. I don't think I don't think people understand. Well, I shouldn't say people people do understand it. I don't think you know. For me, realizing that these guys haven't had that, you know, that's an extra two weeks to a month of. Practice and real practice, right? Preparation. I mean, we've it's like an extra spring ball. So when you look at the guys on our team who are sophomores, juniors, and seniors, I think that they've never had that time. Um, how much it can develop them? I mean, from from week one till the first bye week, seeing what happened, you know, the development of like Braylon and the guys you just asked me about, and that's across the board. You know, it's across the board. So um, I think uh, I think postseason would you know again it's a great rule, but. It's one thing like we used to be, we'd get those guys at the bowl game, just practice them. Now we're practicing to try to have them play in the game. And so, uh, so I mean, I think it's a, a huge, huge opportunity for a lot of guys. So if Turner comes back and he decides to, if, you know, if, if, depending on the timing, if he does redshirt, still playing the bowl game would be really big for him.